for the false killer whale, it's lunchtime all day long. It takes about 60 pounds of fish a day to keep this whale happy and well fed. And that's just one animal. This is the chef for the animals at Sea Life Park. He's called the fish bath because his work begins at night when no one is around. By morning, he'll have prepared more than a thousand pounds of fish to make meals for the many inhabitants of Sea Life Park, all divided up and assigned to feeding stations throughout the park. The park keeps feeding charts on all the animals. Individual diets can be changed to meet their needs. And, if necessary, medication can be added for specific animals or species. Even visitors to the park can get into the act. Here, they can buy fish to feed the sea lions. Oh, good girl, Uila. What a nice little friendly dolphin. This is just one of the many behaviors that Uila is learning. It's just waving a friendly flipper, you know, to be a nice little dolphin. You just tired. Yeah. Uila's come a long way since uh, almost three years ago that she came to us off the coast of Makapu'u here. Uh, she was caught riding a, uh, our bow wave on the boat upside down. <laughs> um, she's quite a character. She's, she's probably got about 12 things that she's learning right now and learning to differentiate the different cues and movements. She's quite talented. We use a form of training called Skinnerian Operant Conditioning, but what we use is very modified. And what it is, it's just you reward an animal for something that they've done and ignore what you don't want. You start by accustoming the dolphin to be petted and played with, and then you teach the dolphin to go from point A to point B with a person attached to them, and he's rewarded for it. And you start whistle conditioning the dolphin. You blow the whistle, give them a the fish at the same time, one after another. Then we delay the time between the whistle and the fish, and if the dolphin twitches, he's listening for his fish, so then you know that he's whistle conditioned, then you throw him his fish. After the dolphin has been whistle conditioned, then a whole world opens up to us. The animal or dolphin learns that by doing something he can receive fish. So then we can train the dolphin to do either natural behaviors or behaviors that are not natural to him in the wild. And that can be wearing eye cups and doing sonar work to pick up little rings that are thrown out so that the audience can see how a dolphin uses his sonar, or do a breach, leap up and land on his side. Everything's at our control by putting the behavior on some sort of a cue, either by visual cue or our body position, where we are, it means for him to do something, or an underwater sound cue, or the prop itself. You've got him under similar control. Although the training process is long and requires much patience, the staff is always seeking new challenges. What we are trying to do here is teach our sea lions to ride the golf cart. And the reason for that is we want to be able to bring them out close to school children so that they don't always see animals uh, in the tank or behind the uh, fence, but that they can actually come up and touch the sea lion and, and shake flipper with it. And to do this, it's difficult for many reasons. The first problem we had was to get the animal used to ride on the car. It was very afraid of the motion, and when we started to drive, it got really scared. But they have gotten used to that now. 
Uh, the other problem is that we want to take them away from their safe areas that they are familiar with and out among the public. And sea lions are very shy animals that hesitate to do that. So we have to uh, develop a strong bond between the trainer and the animal, so that the animal can always depend on the trainer wherever he goes. And that's where the golf cart also comes in. It's a, a moving platform for the animal that the animal is very familiar with. And if it gets nervous, it can always return to the golf cart and he feels safe there. Seals and sea lions are known as pinnipeds, from the Latin meaning fin-footed. They are warm-blooded mammals who have adapted to the water. But unlike other sea mammals, such as whales and dolphins, they have also kept their ability to live on land. The park has California sea lions, native to the ocean off the west coast of North America. The males grow to 8 feet in length and weigh up to 800 pounds. The sea lions belong to the family of eared seals. They swim with their foreflippers and steer with their hind flippers. On land, the hind flippers can be turned forward under their bodies, allowing them to walk in a four-footed fashion. In the seal pool are found harbor seals. These belong to the family of hair seals or true seals. Harbor seals average 5 to 6 feet in length and weigh about 250 pounds. They are able to dive to a depth of 300 feet or more and can stay underwater for quite a long time. This is a rare Hawaiian monk seal. These animals inhabit the low-lying shoals and islets of the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. Because it had no predators on land, the Hawaiian monk seal is considered genetically tame. This means that it has no inherent ability to flee from a land enemy. With much of its natural habitat lost to man, today the Hawaiian monk seal has become an endangered species. A Hawaiian monk seal occasionally stays at the park, courtesy of the National Marine Fisheries Service, but is not normally exhibited to the general public.